Hello. So tonight I am going to be making a restock and a redesign of what I've been calling the Thieves Oil Soap. But I'm actually thinking I might rename it as I had done before um, and I'll link my first video of Thieves Oil Soap where I told a little fairy tale that I made up. I was thinking about all of these ingredients that are in traditional thieves oil the clove, the cinnamon, eucalyptus, lemon, and rosemary and how they are much more ancient in their usage and their medicine than the old story of the thieves which as most people know the reason it's called thieves oil is from the year 1413 in the middle of the Black Death Plague, where thieves were robbing people's houses and stuffing these oil-soaked rags up into masks. And that's how they got into people's homes without catching the plague themselves, was the use of these five. But, like I said, if I wanted to go and talk about some of the ancient uses of them while I make this soap and just realize that it they are all five way m older and more important than calling them thieves oil so I have all of my butters and oils melted and incorporated with the lye water solution and I mixed it to a fairly good trace here because I kinda wanna do some layers I was torn about whether I wanted to do layers or a drop swirl so as I know, as I've worked with this oil combination before, it can thicken really fast. So I went with the idea of layers. So we're first, we're going to split off into separate cups. And they don't have to be precise. And I'm going to keep some uncolored as well, which will be like a natural yellow because of all the rich, beautiful shea butter I use and the cocoa butter. So I have all my oils here and for my colorants, one will be left uncolored. One is going to be lemon peel powder as to connect with the lemon that's in the essential oil. The next is turmeric which is just beautiful. Look at that gold and the light. Another extremely ancient, useful, medicinal, can't say enough about it, that it thought it needed right at home in this soap. And of course, my lovely, my favorite, rosemary. Rosemary powder. They are all infused not infused for a long period, but just mixed with some oil. So I'm going to move the uncolored out of the way just for a minute so I can work with these colors. I'm going to pour in the rosemary. And first I'll talk about rosemary. Now I have talked about her before. I have posted about her before on Instagram. My massive love for the plant, the scent of rosemary. And there's much folklore that I've already talked about, especially in connection to the Virgin Mary. But some things I, I that were new that I hadn't talked about today is that Shakespeare must have been a fan because he mentioned it twice. Once was in Romeo and Juliet. Juliet was honored at her burial with rosemary. And also with in Hamlet, Ophelia says to Hamlet, there's rosemary, that's for remembrance. Pray you, love, remember. Rosemary's always been a fixture in the lore of romance and matrimony. It is a symbol in use in courtships and weddings. One old English folklore was that if a girl placed a plate of flour under a rosemary bush on a midsummer's eve, her future hus husband's initials would be written in the flour. Others believed that if you 
wanted to see your true love in a dream, you should put Rosemary under your pillow. And it was in the original story, Sleeping Beauty was said to have awoken from her sleep by Prince Charming by brushing a rosemary sprig over her cheek. It's been used in wedding ceremonies to help remember the wedding vows. The, they, the bride and the groom used to dip rosemary in their wine cups to toast each other. Dried rosemary has been laid in beds to ensure faithfulness. And a bride traditionally gave her groom a sprig of rosemary to hold on their wedding night to ensure that he remains faithful. In the Middle Ages, it, it was given as a wedding favor. Springs, sprigs of it were dipped in gold and given out and tied with a beautiful ribbon to symbolize that the couple were going to start a new life and that they would always remember that their family and friends were there that day. So they were given out to the guests of the wedding. And these are some really funny stories. Of course, everyone knows it was carried in pouches and during the plague. It was burned in hospitals during World War II. It was used in ancient Egypt, ancient Rome, ancient Greece. It's always been used to purify the air of people who are sick. It not only purifies the air, but it's said to have cleansed vibrations. It, it's one of Earth's oldest incenses. It protects against evil. Way before there was ever refrigerators, rosemary was used to preserve meats and other foods. And it would make meat still taste pleasant as well as protect them. It wards off mosquitoes and fleas and moths. And this was really special. I thought this was precious. During the Middle Ages, rosemary was spread on the floor at midnight on Christmas Eve. So as people walked on it, the fragrance would fill the air. This is the belief that those who smelled rosemary on Christmas Eve would have a year of health and happiness. So that, I thought that was so cute. And then, <laughs> this is the one that I was laughing at. I, this is pretty awesome, though. <clears throat> Okay, so Queen Elizabeth of Hungary, who lived between 1305 and 1381, when she was 72, was suffering from severe rheumatism and gout, and she turned to the healing powers of rosemary plant. She began using a variant of rosemary water, which is also called Hungary water, alleging, given, allegedly given to her by a hermit who claimed that it would preserve her beauty and health until her death. And in fact, the legend claims that the treatment so enhanced her health, vitality, and appearance that she, using her own words, was not only cured, but recovered my strength and appeared to all as so remarkably beautiful that the king of Poland asked me in marriage. And by the way, the king of Poland was 26 years old. <laughs> so take that from what you may. <laughs> So there's your rosemary portion. We'll move this out of the way. And next we'll do the lemon. So the the original origin of lemon is unknown. They don't know exactly when it, it was first in use. Obviously it is extremely ancient fruit. Always grown in warm climates. <clears throat> they think that the first were grown in a region that was between India, Burma, and China before those places were even countries. Lemons entered Europe through southern Italy in the 2nd century AD. And during the time of ancient Rome, it was a status symbol for the wealthy. But they were not widely cultivated. They were later introduced to Persia and then to Iraq and Egypt around 700 AD. The lemon was first recorded in literature in a 10th century Arabic writing on farming and was also used as an ornamental plant in Islamic gardens. It was widely distributed through the Arab world and the Mediterranean region between 1000 and 1150 AD. And of course, you know, the lovely things that the lemon just smells so good. It's purifying. It helped sailors who suffered from scurvy. It's high in vitamin C. It's good for your skin. It's good for your digestion. 
it, it actually saved my life when I was pregnant both times because the smell of it, I could just slice lemons and put them in my bag and it would just, if I felt nauseated, it just immediately made it better. It, there's just something about the way that it smells. It just, it's, it's just heavenly. I can imagine what it smells like on a hot summer day in a lemon grove. I, I can't, that's a bucket list thing to go walk in a lemon orchard because that just must smell absolutely amazing. So this is lemon and it's all ready to go. So we'll move that out. And the last one is turmeric. But I won't talk about turmeric. I'll talk about cinnamon and clove real quick. Because although I have used them in soap, I'm not using them this time other than just in the oils. So clove goes back thousands and thousands of years. It, But it's didn't have much history until like around, oh, it was ancient Chinese that first started to record their use of medicinally of using Chinese. And that was around like 200 BC. They would chew the flowerets before they would get to see the emperor so they didn't have stinky breath. And they used it to cure toothaches, which is still wonderful in its use for toothaches, by the way. It grew in a place called the Maluka Islands originally, before it got cultivated everywhere else. And sadly enough, like wars and things were horrible things were done in the name of clove because it was so popular throughout the world that people did horrible things like burn clove trees so that others couldn't have it and stuff. But originally it came from a place called the Maluka Islands. And the natives there had a folklore and a tradition that was to plant a clove tree upon the birth of a child. And the life of the tree was psychologically tied to that of the child, of its fate. If something happened to the tree that did not bode well for the particular child with whom it was connected to. So that's something really special. And the clove is, the word clove is from the French word clou, which means nail, and it's because it look, they look like little tiny nails. The clove is a dried flower of an evergreen tree, and has been used for just many, many thousands of years. It's, they have proof of it in ancient Egypt, they just didn't really record what exactly it was used for. And cinnamon. Ooh, look at this. See, turmeric and soap it just turns this beautiful color. I'll add a little more, see if I can get it a little redder. Now, cinnamon has been used for thousands of years as well, of course. And as early as 2000 and 3000 BC, Egyptians used it. It was a perfuming agent during the embalming process, and it was also used as incense. And it's mentioned several times in the Old Testament as an, an ingredient in anointing oil. It was also a preservative for meats during the winter in ancient times. It would help preserve things, keep things longer for you. And of course, another coveted spice, uh, originally in the first spice trades, only the wealthy had it. But then as it got to grow in different areas of the world, also in warm climates, it got more accessible to everyone. And who doesn't love cinnamon? I mean, the smell is just, oh, it's one of my favorite spices as well. I'm a sucker for anything cinnamon. All right, so these colors are all ready. And we're going to start with the pour. Now, since rosemary is always the loosest, I'm going to pour it last. So I'm going to go with the turmeric first. I'm going to get my spatula. Turmeric is also just a wonderful colorant to start your journey with natural colorants. It it makes a beautiful color in soap, nice and smooth, doesn't give you any trouble. 
You can even actually just put it in in its powdered form if you want to stick blend it in. I just always add a little oil to everything really to make it nice, go in nice and smooth and to pour it in. But it is lovely. It it does really wonderful things in soap for your skin, for the inside of your body as well. It's been used in India for thousands of years as well. Making a mess, but it is pretty. It's like a brick red. So then I'll do next. Uh, let's see what's thicker, the lemon or... Let's do the natural color, the uncolored next. So these won't be like straight line layers. I wanted it to look organically formed, like to where it's just one thing leading into the other. I also forgot to mention that I already added my essential oils, which are from Eden's Garden. That's my favorite, and they call it the Fighting Five. And although I like that name, I'm not a fan of fighting, so I didn't want to call it that either as far as my soap. So it is yet unnamed, but it will be named before this video goes up. I just feel like such precious, ancient ingredients that have always been used to clean, to purify, to protect you from disease, that they deserve a better, more fitting name than thieves, and that they shouldn't be connected to that myth anymore, which I'm sure it wasn't a myth, I'm sure it was true, but they're much older than 1413 AD. They're older, way older than that. I'm going to try to go with the spatula so it kind of lays on the top. Then goes the lemon. I also think Eden's Garden has the nicest blend as far. I've used other brands as blends and they are nice, but there's just something about their blend of it's my favorite and really works really well in soap. And so last is beautiful rosemary. And again, I'm going to use the spatula to kind of pour her on the top. This always makes a wonderful soap to wash your hands with, especially when you've been out and about in this world of what we're dealing with right now. You come back in and wash your hands and even your face a little with some Thieves soap. Nice to wash your face mask with when you have a cloth face mask because then it'll smell good and be very disinfected in a natural way. I'll be making another surprise for this month's soap release as well with the same combination of oils. So here we go for tonight and in the morning we'll cut this and see what the natural layers look like. So see you then. Okay, so good morning and this is beautiful I can't get wait to get into this and see how it looks the rosemary on top looks really nice and as I've said before the combination of natural colorants with different essential oils always make different combinations 
rosemary with any other oil turns a completely different s subtle shade of green. You never know what shades you're going to get and it has a lot to do with the the alchemy of what oils mix with what colorant because you're working with all plants. The oil is a plant and the colorant is a plant or a clay. So I'm very excited here. It smells so good. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. I was afraid that the lemon wasn't going to be too noticeable from the uncolored, but it is. I think next time I might put the green in between those two, but ooh, that's pretty. And it did go through a really nice gel. The turmeric looks great. It's almost completely red. Gorgeous. And the last of the five that I didn't get to talk about last night, well, it's not that I didn't get to, I just didn't have enough time, is eucalyptus. So, eucalyptus is truly ancient. According to the New World Encyclopedia, eucalyptus trees, or it's similar to those, were originated between 35 and 50 million years ago. That's just wow. Not long after the continent of Australia, New Guinea separated from the large prehistoric supercontinent that was in the southern hemisphere. They call that Godwanda. Godwana. The eucalypt <clears throat> the eucalyptus tree has been eaten by animals f since tw 20 million years ago. And it's, interestingly enough, it's one of those plants that it actually gets improved by fire. So, like, if there's been fires in the forest where it lives, it actually makes it thrive more. So it's super hardy. But isn't that amazing? It's, it's a prehistoric plant. I remember being just absolutely blown away when I read that about roses, too. From the beginning of Mother Earth, there was eucalyptus. Ooh, look at that one. So I'm liking this like that. So it's not really kind of striped. It's, it's like natural, just layers. I let it do what it wanted to do. Beautiful. We can see how it went through gel right there. Especially makes such a nice smooth texture of the soap too when it goes through gel. And the last one, ooh, that's cool. That's going to be a good size sample. That one almost looks like a canyon. So this one that is yet unnamed, but made with thieves oil. And another very special one. And some buttermilk milk baths in three different kinds. And a Mother's Day gift set will all be available on the next shop update, which is April 27th, the full moon on April 27th. Shop links will be listed below, as well as my Instagram. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you'd like to see any other naturally colored soap videos or all of the other naturally colored bath things I make. Thank you so much. Take care.